It is I. The lulls. How are you doing this morning, Mika? A little bit late today because I actually was in a voice call a few minutes ago. Setting up for a tabletop or doing a session zero of a tabletop RPG. And I'm going to be playing with some other VTuber friends in a couple weeks. But I did say we were going to stream today. That's what we're going to do. It's going to be fairly relaxed though. Just uh, have some writing done for today. I need to get back into a regular habit of doing these writing streams. Good morning, Perquib. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Yes, indeed, it is the lulls. In the flesh, in the digital flesh, as it were. Right now, though, I'm just setting up, just uh, putting together my uh, components here. How are you both doing today? It's been a while. It's been a while. Do, do, do. I'm also on the fence on whether or not I should play music in the background. If I do, it's probably going to be muted so that only I could hear it, but it's going to suck for everyone that can't hear it because it'll just be... It'll basically just be me and uh, typing noises. If you're into that, I mean, I won't judge, but, you know. Can't help but feel like this uh, leap motion holder is going to fail a lot sooner than I expected. Hopefully not too soon though. To, to do Let's see if this works. It does, but it's gonna fall off my face or fall off my neck fairly soon. Hopefully it will stay on long enough for us to get through the stream. I do have some uh, gardening I would like to do today, so we're not gonna stick around for too long. Everyone's just waking up as well. Cat won't let me say hi. <laughs> and yet you still managed to do so. Interesting. How are you this morning, Aster? I think I had a trouble calling you Aster instead of Night Gardenia for the longest time. I actually have a friend who also went by Aster. So every time I say the name, I think of them first. 
oddly enough. Uh, thank you for the Let's Party Redeem going the legend. Starting this morning upright, it seems. Can't, won't let me say hi. It took me three minutes to send a message. <laughs> uh, God, I love cats. I've been doing this thing where I include an image with every tweet that I do that has a link in it. Because supposedly, supposedly, it will counteract the um, algorithm's attempt to downgrade your tweet into nothingness. And so far, people have I've been receiving likes and the occasional retweet on these things, so I'm assuming it's working. We're hacking the system, chat. We are defeating the Musk one step at a time. Rise and shine, it's party time, you bet, you bet. Alright, so to reiterate what I said on Twitter and VT Social, I'm going to be doing some writing practice today. I'm just going to be taking some writing prompts and creating something off of them. Some of it will be cringe, some of it will be cringe, but less so. However, by suggestion of a, another friend VTuber or Tearwolf, I will be... I will be up for doing some very light editing and reviewing of... A view, a reviewing of work on today's stream if you're interested. However, I will be limiting it to 500 words. I, If it's anything longer than that, I'm going to try hard a little too much. And something that I don't really have any real subconscious control over. After you spend several years in, uh, several years basically doing or learning how to do this for a living, you kind of just go into this mode where you have to do tra take everything seriously. So, so what suddenly was intended to be a few minutes of like some friendly, um, friendly synopsis, friendly editing, friendly assistance ends up turning into a three hour long grueling, uh, grueling basically study session. <laughs> you just did a morning workout? Very nice, very nice. I need to get back into doing workouts in the morning as well. Is that image and link in the same tweet or image then link in a separate tweet? Um, I stopped doing the whole thing where you put the, where you put the link in a separate reply altogether because I was not convinced that it actually worked. So what I did instead, well, because what I read was adding a link of any kind to a post kills its visibility. So what I did instead was I read somewhere else that supposedly attaching an image to a post, regardless of whether it has a link or not, removes this debuff, removes the link debuff entirely. And as you can see, immediately someone retweeted my post already, two people, and two people liked it. Hey, it's Soulstone. Soulstone, welcome to the stream. We get to meet each other in the flesh. How are you doing? Hey there, my friend. I am at work and can't stay, but I wanted to pop by a moon, send some love and hugs, and hope you have a great stream. I'll do my best to be here for a stream of yours in the future. Oh, well, thank you for stopping by. I really appreciate that, Soulstone. I hope you have a great day at work, and we will see you again soon. <laughs> so that's what's up with that. Um, oh, trying. I'm trying. I'll be trying that again today. Mm -hmm. So experiment with a little bit. I did. Um. There's this guy who did a deep dive and investigated the Twitch algorithm because the algorithm was actually leaked. Or was it released? I don't know if it was released or released or if it was leaked. But either way, it escaped into the wild and they were going through it and figuring out how to break the system for our use. Unfortunately, we learned that it turns out Twitter is in fact paid to win. Buying Twitter membership, Twitter Blue, really does increase your visibility, as dumb as that sounds. Also... The only thing this algorithm cares about is likes and retweets. Replying and conver conversations actually doesn't do anything for visibility, which is really fucking dumb. So when you see people like abusing the system to try and get as many likes and retweets as possible, that's because the more likes and retweets something has, the further up on the for you and following tabs it shoves it. So that's why it's extremely important to like and retweet everything that you see that you actually care about. 
And obviously, if you don't care about something, uh, ignore it and avoid it. Although pretty much all interactions does something for the algorithm, which includes which impressions. Basically, it's just a measure of any time it was seen. Engagements is any time you click on a link, reply to something, go to their profile, expand, yada, 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 all that garbage. Uh, I was going to be doing some writing after my workout, but Cat says it's cuddle time instead. Oh, I see. Your cat has dictated it's time to hang out with the lulls as they attempt to uh, gather enough attention span to respond to one of these prompts. This is all I used to do on Tumblr chat, which was basically aesthetic posting and um, Tumblr retweets and reblogs. Reblogs, not retweets. I don't, I don't know why I said retweets just now. First off, let me go ahead and... Uh, Post myself on all these other discords I'm part of really quick. You gotta do the shilling. Kinda wish I had a bot for doing all this stuff automatically, but I am a bot. I am my own bot, so I have no excuse. I can't rely on a another bot to my do my job for me. Is anyone's promo zone? We are clear for takeoff. All right, and I got Firefox over here muted, so it shouldn't matter if I play music in the background. At least it's not gonna be picked up. I need to go read your stuff. I love replies to those writing prompts. Aww. Yeah, that's pretty much all I used to do on my previous blogs. And it's what I started doing again on this on this blog because seeing people seem to enjoy it and also because it's just good good habit to build, honestly. It's very good. I used to do that sort of thing all the time. Tumblr used to be great for inspiration. I think it still is, actually, on some level. Some world. If y'all would like to listen along to whatever it is I'm listening, uh, feel free to basically look up the search terms that I'm using. In this case, I'm looking up tracks by the by the artist World, which is spelled W R L D, who is under Monster Cat Records. I know there's like a World playlist somewhere, so I'm just gonna cheat and go there if I can find it, of course. I might have to do it by by uh, genre instead of just going to any specific artist. Let's listen to some house in the background. Also, yesterday when I was drawing the meme, one of my pals apparently read through your lore and said it was good. Aww. Really? Well, consider my ego boosted. <laughs> I wonder what lore they read through, though, because there's not much on my VTuber Discord, or VTuber on my uh, VTuber blog at the moment, since I'm still building it. Um, unless they found my previous blog, stormbind.tumblr.com. Ah, uh, thank you for the likes. Part of the reason why I haven't gone back to my original blog is because I found out that for some reason... Where did this go? Where did my... And you know what's ironic is, I'm pretty sure this is one of the few chapters that did, was not attached to anything, so it's like... But even then, it's very uncommon for something like that to happen. Tumblr has it in their terms of service where, even if someone were to delete their work, if it's been reblogged on someone else's account, that part's gonna still be there. So like, for example, 
if Xander were to just magically decide one day she wanted to leave the platform and deleted her art, it's still going to remain on my end. It's just not going to re remain on her end. So I don't know what's going on there. But that really soured my outlook on Tumblr. I feel, I mean, I should have expected this. One day I'm going to come back to this website and I'm going to find that all my links to all my old work is just going to be gone. Because that's because, haha, <laughs> corporations. But, you know, it's, it's kind of depressing going back and seeing active decay on your previous social media websites. I'm not sure, but I told her to check out the radio drama. Oh, I'm gl well, I see. I will not question that then. I'll just assume that she saw, she dug, did some digging and read through my stuff and enjoyed um, what she found. This is actually a very, a very, uh, this music playing right now is very convenient. Um, if she wants to read more lore that is actually in character this tumblr blog i have here sent to engine at tumblr.com is actually written in character unlike the other ones this one was meant to be written from the perspective of someone stormbind.tumblr.com was just my uh author avatar uh, blog, but this was originally the, the originally I was going to write all of these stories in this universe in character, just in this mysterious journal type way. You shouldn't be able to hear any music because I actually have Firefox silence right now. Um, the reason being that even though Monster Cat generally allows people to use their music for any reason, Twitch has been randomly muting my VODs from time to time, even though I have even though I have the right to use this music in my content. So, to be safe, I've just been meeting them entirely, unfortunately. I'll have to find a way to play music in the background that I feel safe using. In fact, there's actually a VTuber who offered to make some music for me in return for helping their friend out with some healthcare finances. So that's cool. That's something to look forward to. But uh, in the meanwhile, unfortunately, things will be muted. If you want to listen along, though, this is pretty much what I'm listening to right now. Uh, the house playlist under Monster Cat Uncaged Record, Monster Cat Records, or Monster Cat Uncaged. Assuming it doesn't break on me, of course. We're just going to click around, go straight here to rootkit. It's kind of weird that the playlist died. And did not go to the next one immediately. Hey, Anarchy! Long time no see! How have you been? Oops, sorry. How have you been? Long time no see. We are just getting started, actually. I was just ta talk telling Chad about my previous uh, other blogs and some of my story writing. Mm -hmm. I think I mentioned that I was planning on reading through one of these blogs a reading through some of my previous writing as a stream, right? I think I was actually supposed to do that a couple weeks ago. But I kind of woke up late and not many people were available at the time. So I did not at that time. You okay? Just saw you were online, so you want to say hello? Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate that. Actually, you know what? I need to kind of get in the habit of Getting used to... Oh man, it's getting really dark outside. Must be a storm rolling in. Anyway, um... Thank you for the posture check as well. I did say that... I was going to do some streams where I just did some reading of my previous work. I wrote this one in 2015, but it's still the same universe as a lot of my other work. So, I think what I'll go ahead and do is read through this. I'll do my best to not, um, I will do my best to not get, to not cringe internally as I read my old work. I will say that, and I will say that all this stuff is pretty much wrapped into the same universe. The same universe where 
I come from. I'm clearly not speaking in roleplay in the roleplay right now. <laughs> Because it's kind of hard to navigate the uh, waters of being both an in-character la, la creatura and also the writer that themselves have been writing all these characters. For the purposes of acting in-character, for anyone else that's just coming in just now, um, I'm, re -re I'm reading over memories that I had suddenly come across after waking up from a three-month slumber since I did just re-debut on April the 1st. Some of these things are fairly short, like this one. All the fragments are per in particular are as they, as they are, as they say, are in fact just nothing but fragments of other stories. These things did help me a lot as far as filling out the world of Fade Out. Some of them are quite long and some are quite short. And some of them were had to be written in a certain kind of mood. It's very difficult for me to write in character as much as I used to because at the time that these characters were created, I was in a much, much, much worse place emotionally, mentally and emotionally. And lar in large part, a lot of my early writing, a lot of my early science fiction writing was basically a form of therapy. It's kind of interesting to know that nowadays, this is a legitimate form of therapy. Um, basically writing fiction, uh, psychoanalyzing fiction. There's even a VTuber who specializes who's particular brand of um, clinical therapy involves uh, hand-holding people through creative writing as a form of working out their issues, which I thought was really cool. I did not realize that that was like an actual professional form of therapy. So sometimes I'll be reading through these things, and if it seems very alien as compared to the persona I have today, well... I mean, a lot of you in chat right now are yourselves writers, so you probably already understand where I'm getting going going with this whole thing. But um, yeah, I'm gonna. And without further ado, let me go ahead and just uh. This is one of my more. I think this is actually one of my more crazier uh splurges. It's really weird going through these old blogs. 2016. So much has changed in the past... It's year 2023 right now? So much has pa changed in the past like 7 years. It's kind of wild. Without further ado... Fragment M9FL4S. It's been long enough that I've forgotten what these codes mean. But I'm pr fairly sure that I had a purpose to these. Right now, listening to Stone Max back to start. <laughs> Even this music is actually conveniently is conven is conveniently named. It's going back to the start. National Level Right to Monk 2016. I used to do it basically nonstop, and then I got real therapy and my mental landscape transformed a lot, and now I try to use that old engine for creativity and realize that I don't really want to go there anymore, and that's okay. Yeah, that's how I feel, too. I try to deal with it by viewing the writing and the characters I created during that time period less as... I try, I try to do my best to separate myself from that time period, but instead of, like, separating myself to in the sense of... I used to do this kind of toxic thing where... In fact, I still do this to an extent, where each new itineration to myself, each new username, is basically an older version or a recreation of what came before and an attempt to basically not fuck up this time. Kind of like creating a new save game, right? 
But I'm coming to terms with the fact that it's not so much that I'm constantly creating a new save file to try and redo things. The fact of the matter is, whether I want to believe it or not, each of my previous identities is still going to be a, a version of myself. It's still my, me myself. It's just myself from a different time period. And it's not that those selves were inherently bad or evil or wrong. Well, they're wrong in some ways and right in some ways. It's just that it's a kind of a process. When you look at a story, especially when you look through a story, when you flip through the pages back and forth, chapter one, chapter end, the character, you're seeing bits and pieces and parts of those characters as they were at that time. It's kind of like looking through a comic book you're looking, you're seeing, you get to see time, you get to see time in a non-linear perspective because you're seeing the character from different points in time. I used to be very mean to middle school me and be okay with myself by saying old me was bad and sucks and I'm not then. And now I'm like, that was a middle schooler going through it. Exactly, right? I also feel like you can use story writing as a f way to build empathy, to build your your skill and emotional intelligence, to build your own empathy, because I look at this character, I look at the person that is talking in here, and they are a person that is hurting, that was hurting, and is hurting, and it's not, these are not people, and in my personal as part of my personal religion, I like to think of these characters as real people, just not real people as in, in the sense of being here present with me right now, but in a different time and place that I can only access through imagination and through memory as opposed to physically. These are real people and they are people deserving of sympathy. Not, they're not people that are deserving necessarily of contempt because what's the point of feeling contemptuous of a person that is both unaware, that is unaware of your presence and has no ability to actually hurt you in a way that matters? What I feel is more akin to pity and more akin to sympathy for the fact that they exist, in, that in this timeline, they're existing with this sort of, with this pain. And... I'm just kind of going all over the place right now. Sorry. I This is something that a lot of my longtime viewers have probably noticed. I have a tendency to ramble. Especially when it comes to stuff like writing. It's kind of crazy too. Where I pretty much, over the years, you pretty much rewrite the same story over and over and over again. And each time you rewrite it, it gets a little bit better and a little bit closer to the vision that you're probably going for. As you grow as a writer, as you gain experience, as you gain vocabulary. So, I've probably seen this exact scene a thousand times by now. But each time I've seen it, and I'm increasing the size of it so it's easier to read. Each time I've seen it, it changes a little bit, but the base idea behind it probably hasn't changed at all. The only reminder I have that I was once human is this arm, she has said, holding her right arm up. Her only remaining full organic limb. Slowly, a patch of white of white from where she had laid it on the table faded to a peach yellow tint. Look. It changes when it touches objects. When I enter cold storage, only this part of me feels chilly. She tested the word uncertainly. A few cycles ago, I damaged myself, and I felt pain as the scalpel pierced my skin. She balled her hand into a fist and examined the knuckles. Her skin had an eerie sheen to it, like a newborn babe. I have not felt pain in some time, since the laboratory, or since I... fell. A frown passed through her face and then vanished so just as quick, turning thoughtful. Is this part of being human? Well, Jody scratched behind her ear. I suppose so. Not like you can get to the best things in life without a little hurt, anyway. Even fucking hurts the first time. 
Chia stopped examining her arm and turned to face Jody, curious. It's reproduction, not pain. Is reproduction not painful with each conception and delivery? Jody shook her head, her cheeks flushing slightly. That is not at all what I meant. <sighs> Crazy. I can't wait until I get to introduce you all to Shay. Shay was one of the uh, was also one of the most one of my most favorite characters back when I was writing. She, Mercury Nine and Fade Out exist in the same universe, but they exist distended from time. Pretty much, uh, maybe a few years difference between each other. I have to be very careful though, because I've changed. I've done a lot of retconning when it comes to these characters. So some of these things here, when I look back in this database of stuff, and it's thunderstorming right now, chat. So you may hear some thunder in the background. When I look back through some of these things, some of them I'm not sure if I would have written the same way. Except for this one. This one was so cool. This one was... I wrote this like... This is one of those characters that I just wrote on a whim. And then after I wrote them, I was like, I need to write more stories with this character because it's, it's so cool. Write a 200-word blurb for a thriller that doesn't start with after a woman is brutally murdered. Because at one point, after a woman is brutally murdered, used to be a very common, uh, very pulpy introduction to a novel. An introduction to most, soap opera, most um, thriller-based soap operas, I assume. And I basically just took the thrill idea and I turned it on its head. Let me try doing my best at movie voice. I'm terrible at movie voices, but I will do my best to do one anyway. Oh man, this storm is fairly nasty. Now I'm glad that I did not decide to go work outside early this morning. It looks like it would have been a terrible idea. I love this energy of you going to your stuff like this is cool. Yeah, you know what? Uh, <laughs> you know what, Car Aster? That's actually a recent phenomenon. I used to be afraid of doing something like that because I don't want to become a narcissist. And I have this sort of um, superstition that getting too big of an ego or liking my stuff too much might make me... Um, basically, uh, f snuffing my own fumes, to put it unflatteringly, as one of my ex-friends used to put this sort of thing. I was kind of afraid of, uh, if I liked my stuff, my stuff too much, I might be tempted to slack off and my work would degrade. But that sort of attitude has unfortunately only had the opposite effect of making me hate my own work. So it's kind of a balancing act. You kind of need to love your own work, but also hate it just enough to be able to look at it critically and um, improve it where it needs improvement. At the same time, you need to give yourself credit where credit is due. Or learn to give yourself credit when credit is due. Okay, okay. After the devastation of a terrorist attack carried out using an antimatter device which killed billions, both halves of the United Colonial Government formed the Counterterrorism Unit, ACID, Allied Counterintelligence Division, to seek out, counteract, and eliminate those responsible before a similar attack could be carried out in the near future. One of those agents of this organization, Rubina Korapati, is hot on the lead of an ex-Special Forces sniper who was mysteriously removed from duty and vanished without a trace. Until now! But when she does catch up with a sniper, a young female immigrant hailing from the Kim Moon Federation, a target is painted on both of their backs, leading to the deaths of several civilians. Rubina is summarily charged with dereliction of duty, willingly endangering civilians, and, remarkably, aiding and abetting terrorist forces. Her law enforcement credentials are revoked, as is her status as a citizen of the United Colonial, Colonial Governments. She is spared execution only due to her service record. 
It is now five standard years later. Rubina works on the sidelines as a private investigator, forever scarred mentally, emotionally, and physically from her fall from grace. She does her best to help the poor and downtrodden. I am being... I just had a throw redeem. Thank you, Lilith. How are you doing this morning? It is now... We're just, I'm just uh, reading through my old, old writing blog, um, going through some of my science fiction lore. A lot of this is very out of date, but some of it is still fun, I feel. So I'm just giving y'all an idea of how I used to write back in the uh, good old days of the twenty early 2010s, mid-2010. I think that creative things are for enjoying, and if you enjoy them, then bam, successful hobby. I agree. I feel like everyone has to enjoy their hobby in some manner. Otherwise, why are you doing the hobby? As my best friend from college once told me, there are easier ways to make money than writing fiction. So don't stress too much about trying to make the next big thriller because straight up, um, it's RNG. It's largely luck. If you go into something into a creative field like writing, hoping to somehow hack the system to make it big, to make millions and millions of dollars, I'm going to tell you straight up, it's not going to happen. And all the works of fiction that you think were a matter of, oh, her, der, they were able to crack the code. It wasn't so much that they cracked the code, it's that they had friends in high places. Aragon, or everyone, people tend to forget that Aragon, that uh, Christopher Paolini's parents uh, were publishers. They had connections. They were able to boost their son's first work, Aragon, up into the upper annals of um, fame and fortune. Ready Player One is the most is the current infamous example of a work of fiction that is not particularly good, but kind of just kind of bursts into the limelight because I believe the movie deal was made before the story was even finished. That's not to say that the books can't be fun and the movies aren't enjoyable. It's just that it's by most science fiction standards, there are definitely better works of cyber, of cyberpunk out there. So it is now five standard years later and Rubina works on the sidelines as a private investigator, forever scarred mentally, emotionally, and physically from her fall from grace. She does her best to help the poor and downtrodden, those ignored by the UCG, which has only grown more tyrannical in the intervening years. Until she gets a tip. Someone is knocking off UCG representatives one by one. Someone with a grudge, and they're coming for her next. I hate to use it as an example, but wasn't the Harry Potter series rejected like seven times before it was actually published? It was. In fact, the original, the first version of Harry Potter was written on a napkin. Uh, and at the time, J.K. Rowling was, I do believe, in heavy, heavily in debt. The only reason why Harry Potter kind of blew up like it did was because, basically, the editor at the time took one glance at her submission and immediately unironically threw it into the gar threw it into the trash because first off publishing was a lot more sexist back then than it was than it is today and the part of the editor's mind was one this is a really dumb sounding fantasy novel young adult our children will not want to read this and two it's by a woman author no one no one's definitely one going to want to read this and supposedly his daughter came into it was playing around his office and pulled it out of the trash and she started reading it herself and then she went to her dad and was like daddy this is great why did you throw this in the trash so the publisher decided you know what, my kid enjoys it, let's give it a shot. However, they wrote J.K. Rowling's name on the, on the series as J.K. Rowling because they were, he was afraid that people were going to read the name, immediately see it was a female author, and, be, and immediately think, oh, this is garbage. And then the rest was history. Harry Potter ended up, ended up becoming the fantasy novel for an entire generation, such as mine, such as other millennials. Ready Player One, to me, that's Sword Art Online done right, not sorry. It is pretty much Sword Art Online for the Western world, though, isn't it? <laughs> I 
I do must say that I did not watch the movie, so I can't really comment on the movie. From what clips I did see on YouTube, it was fairly good. Or at least, as far as cyberpunk, as far as science fiction goes, it was fairly enjoyable. Jeez, does Mary Shelley not make an influence? Um, you know that's a good point. But I guess people do tend to casually forget that Mary Shelley wrote Frank wrote Frankenstein. There are so many great female authors. That is very true. But that is the publishing industry for you. My understanding is that today the publishing industry is not as sexist, maybe, but I eh, I would not count on it. Honestly, part of the reason why I decided when I was getting it, when I was heavily researching the publishing industry, heavily researching going into writing and getting out my first novels and stuff. Um, when I created my author avatar, and since I decided to out myself anyway, out, out myself anyway, um, when I created this, uh, this identity, this um, Tumblr blogger named Storbine, who goes by the name J.A. Storm, I created this name for two for a few reasons. First off, I liked it how it rolled off the tongue. Second, it's a loose reference to a anonymous writer that I that I was friends with growing up, who was a very prolific science fiction writer himself, who um also used a pseudonym on who also used a pseudonym. They actually went online by the name uh Juliet a I uh, was it Juliet A Storm and the reason why I've taken up their handle is because in the first part they're no longer using that handle in fact they've completely disappeared from the internet at large and we have completely lost contact with them and I'll tell you why in just a minute and also because the name J A Storm to me is a very gender neutral term a very gender gender neutral name and a very and a very uh ambiguous name from both from a national perspective from a ethnicity perspective um i have mentioned multiple times on stream and on social media because i've been a lot more comfortable about admitting this i'm actually southeast asian in meat space um, my last name doesn't sound South Southeast Asian, but my la but my meat space name, my flesh name, uh, sounds Hispanic. In fact, it's basically the Hispanic version of Mr. and Mrs. Smith. You can't get more Hispanic than that. So when I first got into heavily researching becoming a writer and everything, um, I was strongly concerned that, given that the publishing industry was extremely sexist, what well, can be extremely sexist. And at times come off as extremely racist. I was concerned that if I used my real name and real identity, that even if I did manage to get into the industry, um, my work was going to get pigeonholed. And when it gets pigeonholed, um, they try to. It basically all the marketing ends up going in a certain direction. I don't want people to look at my. I want my work to be judged on its own merits. I don't want it to be judged based off of what's the what my agent not the agent. The agent is supposed to work on your behalf. A good agent is going to basically center everything that you around you and your brand and not about not around what they think sells. But publishers do not think that way. Publishers are almost always around what sells. And I don't want to. I don't want a publisher to pigeonhole me into a certain number, into certain number of minority groups and a certain number of like stereotypes, just because of what they, th what kind of person they think I am, based off of my real world information. So immediately pseudonym it was. Um, at the same time, there's a kind of I have this kind of concern, at least back in the early 2010s. A lot of things have changed in the past 10 years or so. 
um, a lot of things have changed since I've graduated from university. Um, I does, I'm not going to hide the fact that I tend to write a lot of fiction that involves female identifying characters and characters who are androgynous or characters that tend to be along the LGBT spectrum. And when you do that, and even today I find that this is kind of a problem, I don't want people to think that, oh, well, this is clearly a work that's been uh, catered specifically for this demographic, so we're going to shove it in this demographic as well. Um, I would like to believe and I would like to hope that my fiction can appeal to, can, appe can be picked up and read by anyone and, some, and anyone can grab something from it. Not that I'm trying to make a mass market novel because mass market novels have the opposite problem where they're so generic that they have a lack of substance. But um, more like I am trying to actively avoid being, for lack of better terms, typecast, I guess. It's regardless of my wants. It's I'm probably going to be typecast anyway because once again, that's how pub that's how mainstream publishing works. They're going to find a niche they could throw you in. It's not like VTubing where you can actually just find a niche and delve straight into that niche and you'll always have an audience. Um, any tips for how to do your lore? I could write entire streams for that, honestly. Mm -hmm. Um. What are your ideas as they stand, I guess? I'm like, let me see here. Lilith, Bella, Mir. <laughs> so you are a tabletop VTuber, first and foremost. <laughs> Since you're a tabletop role player or a tabletop VTuber, especially one that, spe that specializes in Pathfinder and Dungeons and Dragons and Vampire Survivors, the first assumption people are going to make, because of your because of the genre that you're interested in, they're immediately going to assume that you're a fantasy VTuber of some kind. However, you need not allow that to define what your lore is and what kind of YouTuber you are. It just happened because, like, for example, I'm, I stream a lot of fighting games, but I'm not a fighting game personality, am I? I'm a specifically, of course, even, for cyber, um, even among cyberpunk AIs, I don't look like a cyberpunk VTuber from the onset. Um... But then again, I also merged a lot. I also mixed together a lot of my own science fiction writing with my VTuber lore, so I kind of had an easier path to take. So, when developing your VTuber lore, um, we should first start off with what kind of perception, what kind of avatar, what do you want people, what kind of face are you trying to show to the world, I guess? I see here, for example, that you want to see the world become a better place. All right. Um, to you, how do you want to see the world become a better place vis-a-vis -vis, um, VTubing on Twitch as a variety game and tabletop player? It's okay if you don't have an answer to that question right now because it's a very open-ended question and it's a sort of question that's probably going to require an essay to fill out. But um, it is a good starting point to think about when it comes to your own lore. Hell, you don't even necessarily have to have lore. You could just, you could just have a synopsis about um, the kind of person that you want to be. I actually did write something like this for a V2 Mutual, V2 Mutual a while back. Um, and it's funny, but I used to have a series on YouTube that I have not filled out in a while where I create character concepts and lore for VTubers. Let me go show that to you. I'm going to go ahead and very quickly show a shill my YouTube channel because it's relevant to our conversation. 
It's down here at the very bottom. I actually have a playlist of V2 lore uh, videos where I basically went through with two uh, mutuals and I helped them develop their lore and develop their character creation. So those may interest you. If you want to get an idea for where to start. And basically, I had them. I'll go ahead and unlock the volume. I basically uh, went through with them and talked to talked with them about you also have a thing like about you know their character. I've had some help coming up with some stuff and I have some ideas, but I don't really know how to put it together. Oh, okay. Um, hmm. I mean, could you, you could theoretically instead just write a summary around yourself. Like, for example, I think Yoruki Chan still has the one that I made for them on their Twitter about page. But let me go see, because it's been a bit since I visited them. <laughs> oh, I didn't realize that they're actually streaming right now. They're actually streaming Tekken 7. We'll probably have to raid them afterwards. But, uh... <laughs> They probably removed it since they're no longer a newcomer to VTubing, and so there is no need to even have it around anymore. Uh, yeah. It used to be, there used to be a huge blog, it used to be a huge, um, sort of blurb here explaining who Yoguruki was, but that was quite a while ago, unfortunately. So I can't use that as an example. Hey the real, hey the real salties. Um, I'm doing pretty well. You're just doing a basic writing in um, YouTube a lore stream tonight. How are you doing? I'm looking over my own lore now, and it's all compressed in two paragraphs. It doesn't have to be long either. Sometimes shorter is better, honestly. Ooh, why am I feeling so numb right now? I've gone so far. In the end, it doesn't even matter. <laughs> I'm out of water, too. Do a little bit of posture checking over here. I actually feel kind of fuzzy inside. I probably need to get this checked out at some point. But we should be okay. I completely lost my train of thought. Um, Had some help coming up with some stuff and have some ideas, but I don't really know how to put it together. How best to... Got already stuck on water too, but near nearby Walmart though, can do it a crowd. Have you tried going through via off hours or seeing if you can go during the time periods when, um, I guess the early mornings or right before closing would be best, wouldn't it? So Lilith, um, if you are comfortable, would you mind? Oh, thank you for the hydrate redeem. Would you mind sharing some of the ideas that you currently have, and we'll see if we can uh, fit together the puzzle pieces. I mean, if you're up to, if you're up for it, if you'd like to do it off stream, I'm available for that too. Hey, you got to sleep in. No biggie, right?
I really need to fix my tumor blogs. This used to be the coolest shit back in the day. Still is, actually. You can add me to the thing on Discord? Sure, sure. That works. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Maybe I should have just gone back to bed after the uh, thing with Cosmo and friends. Eh. Nah. I said I was going to come by today to do a little bit of writing, a little bit of editing, and a little bit of reading. And that's where I am. I do feel a little uncomfortable right now, and I'm sure it's because... It's probably because I haven't had breakfast, to be, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> and I've only had water all day, so my body's probably screaming at me to acquire sustenance at some point. Rather be kept off stream if possible, though, that's perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. We don't need to do anything on stream if you don't want to. I mean, it kind of defeats the purpose if part if one or more parties are uncomfortable with the writing process. Uh, background is nice, but could use a panel for readability. That's very true. This would probably be easier to read on, say, a mobile device, but on a desktop. Um, I do realize that the little nebulae in the background is kind of conflicting with the white text. As compared to all this a little bit darker background over here. Then again, this one was, to be fair, this blog was not necessarily made for readability. It was more for aesthetics. This one was a lot more catered towards, okay, people can read my stuff without burning their eyes out. Check if the link works. They sent it on Discord. Let me see here. It seems to. <laughs> Ooh, Lilith floor chat. Fury Pog. Thank you for letting me into the secret club. I will get to read it, doing a large read back on this area. Uh, probably off stream. Probably over breakfast. <laughs> so, chat. What would you all like to let, like me to read for our read next? Would you like me to pick out a random selection here from my database of old work? Would you like me to read some bad fan fiction? Your tongue went a bit weird. Yeah, I need to rebind this to a different key other than enter. <laughs> yeah, it's a toggle. I have a few toggles here. Eyeglasses. My May hat from when I play Guilty Gear Strive. Yep, 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 yep. Yep, 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 yep. Yep, 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 yep. Steam mode lily. Ah! Been rendered black and white. Going back to the good old days. The early years of animation. I don't know any ancient Disney songs. Nope. Um, I don't have any sound redeems attached right now. Although I need, I've been meaning to get to that for a while, but I've not gotten a chance to. The first sound redeem I'm definitely gonna be putting in is probably gonna be Tatsugeki, to be perfectly honest. As much as I play, as much as I play Guilty Gear Strive, it's been a long time coming.
Just in case I DM'd you, Laura, if you want to read. Sure, sure, sure. Do you, would you like me to read it on stream or read it on my own time? I already like it, I'll tell you that much. Sure, why not? Okay, here we go. This is via the lore of VTuber Tear Wolf or can do Tear Wolf. Ah! Typing away. And yeah, we're gonna be reading tonight. Lore. A being from the realm of runic magic known as the world of Otha. They hail from, the tri from a tribe of plush-like animals born from the minds of individual wizards. This one's soul in particular was fabricated by a cabal of some of the wisest in Otha's human race, whom four Danes, that's a good word, I've never heard of the word, I've never seen the word ordained used like that, but I'm going to steal that from you now, who ordained their success for homunculi to be a grand observer of all reality from within the universe. So you're basically the Watcher from Mar Marvel, that's kind of cool, as gifted a personified doll, as gifted as the personified wolf doll was, his intellect was too powerful to maintain restraint of his volition, and he turned to a life of malice with the intent to rewrite the universe itself via the dark properties of runic magic. All chaos would have been chronicled as, to, as of today had the misunderstood miscreant not been felled by an adversary who wielded the purest of the runic elements. As, as so... And so, having reflected on his past evils, Enkendu Tearwolf maintains his responsibility as the observer of in a nonchalant uh, demeanor and lives on the path of humility to study the answers of existence through tranquility. Well, your day just got opened up. Very bog. <laughs> I can't believe a Kander Tearwolf is a is a supervillain turned into an anti-hero. I honestly would have not never I would have not guessed your alignment from reading that. Your game this week just got postponed. Oh no. I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> do, do, do. Of course, most people would have never guessed my character to be chaotic neutral either. The arc that I ran was going to have a diff take on a very different form, but I like the way that it turned out. It's very important when running these things to remember that since the players are the main characters, you got to allow a little bit of improv. In fact, you need to allow a lot of improv. Yeah, that's basically the summary. Villain turned anti-hero. I love it. Our very own Dritz do der Erden. More or less. Thank you for allowing me to read your lore on stream. <laughs> I rarely write villains as a main character out of fear that someone will, out of fear of maybe identifying with the villain a little too much. But I do love my anti heroes. Alignments are more of guidelines than actual rules. That's very true. But they are nonetheless a very simple way for me to create quick character quick quick character archetypes, and then you could always just mess with them, make them a little bit more, give them a little bit more substance later down the line. Oh, indeed, villains as protagonists can be problematic. Take Lydia Akami as an example. I love Lady Akami as a villain because, unfortunately, I know. Too many people who identify a little bit too much as light. They're the kind of people that would probably become light Yigamis if they had the power that he had. Um, I unfortunately had a... I unfortunately um, had a late friend who... I'm pretty sure Death Note wasn't around yet, but if it was, he would have identified himself as light, light Yigami. Because they had kind of the same mindset. They had the whole, I'm super good at everything. I, 
because I'm so good at everything and because everyone loves me, I should be the one who's running everything because I can do a better job of everything. And eventually just getting so full of themselves that even when they realize that what they're doing is terrible, they no longer care because they've become so accustomed to the playing the part of the villain that they pretty much have they feel like they have no other recourse but to play the villain, more or less. And my late friend, unfortunately, I don't know if he had that sort of introspection. Um, I mean, actually, I don't know what what kind of introspection he had at the end of his life because uh, I broke up ties with him months before that happened. But uh, as much as people look at characters like Light Yagami and think, "Well, this character is clearly an exaggeration," or "Well, uh, this has a prop," this is a very problematic look into people with. Uh, narcissism and mental illness and with um, overly large egos. I feel uncomfortable looking at Light Yagami for a different reason. And that reason is the fact that I unfortunately know too many people who are real-world Light Yagamis. And unfortunately, for the same reason, I felt like the ending was very much on point. It kind of makes me wonder if the ending, if the story was meant to go longer, or if that, or if the mangaka had intended the ending of Death Notes like that to be like that from the beginning. My understanding also was the anime softened a lot of the characters. Right, the characters were not nearly as cruel in the anime as they were in the manga. I don't know. It's been a while since I read either of those things. I really miss writing my writing fantasy fiction. I loved binge reading Death Note. It was a pleasure. You never read the manga? It was certainly a manga of all time. Certainly the manga of all time. I love this prompt, but it's also terrible. Oh, this is so cute. Your village has 92 people living in it, but only 91 are human. The last one is an elf, and despite being older than the village itself, a child at that. An elf child. You're her 53rd adopted parent. Have I read the architect story? Recently, there was a good review of Death Notes Legacy on YouTube by Bennett the Sage. I don't think I've read... Uh, read the architect story, nor have I seen the review of Death Note by Bennett the Sage. Sounds amazing, though. Okay. I used to be a warrior like you, but until I took an arrow to my eyes. These are actually all, all these are actually amazing. The only reason why I have not attempted to write anything right now. Because my brain is kind of foggy, is kind of slow at the moment. 
in between uh, feeling like I'm going to pass out and whatnot. I'm try I keep I'm running into that issue that sometimes people have. One of the hardest parts about writing is getting started. You might look at something, get inspired for a few seconds, and then immediately after your inspiration, think to yourself, eh, this is dumb, I'm not going to do anything. But that is a trap! One of the strongest things you could do as a writer, or an artist, or a creative, is to have an idea, to have a concept, to have something beautiful, and to force yourself into putting pen to paper. The next hardest thing is to keep yourself from mass deleting or to mass or throw or crumpling it up and throwing it in the trash. <laughs> uh, yeah, it looks like links are blocked here. Lilith, uh, go ahead and send it to me via Discord instead. Um, I would unblock the link, but unfortunately I don't have access to the modding tools from OBS, which is certainly a problem of all time. I might be able to... I can't do it from mobile Twitch either, unfortunately. The Constructor Masterless. Here are all the things that I've written for the Architect Constructor story. I'm loosely arranging them by what I imagine to be the in-story timeline as opposed to the order I wrote them in. The world's most beloved hero. The first ally. The Den. Public opinion about the Architect. A letter. An interview. Bloodhound. Anyone. Siege of the for Fortress of Solace. Do Constructor and Bonfire have a thing? Probably unrelated to prevent, don't worry about. That's kind of cool. I like that. They're all individual links with stories attached to them. Is there any particular story here that you would like me to read? Or is this just like for perusing later? Mm -hmm. I'm up for anything right now. I'm mostly trying to stay awake. At least, or to not pass out before I go grab uh, brunch. It's 11.41 in the morning here. Whew. I can really go for some chicken fried steak. Oh my god, this is terrible. The wizard in your party only knows one spell. It's effective, but even the assassin feels bad about it. Explode your deacon and small your ass. Get bent loser's penis blast. That's fucking terrible. That's fucking horrible. Mostly I just assumed you would like to read it at some point. You assumed rightly. Thank you so much. I'll go ahead and pin it so I don't forget as well. In the afterlife, you are given a choice of seven gates to pass through and indulge in a deadly sin for the rest of eternity, but one in particular catches your eye. A rusty office door labeled Pride in bold front.
Mm -hmm. Typing intensifies. Typing intensifies. Typing intensifies. Typing intensifies. Yeah, yo, we are in an ASMR stream now, chat. I hope you like mechanical keyboards. Uh, Cherry MX greens, I believe. What color are these? I think these are proprietary Razer switches, actually. So I'm not sure what they would be comparable to. Ah, who goes there? Thank you for the let's party redeem, Lilith. Kind of woke me up, broke me out of my rubber there for a second. Sorry, I was trying to get into it, as you could probably tell. <laughs> I don't entirely know where I'm going with this so far, but well, actually, I do have an idea of where I'm going with this story, but it's a very simple idea, and I don't think I can write a convincing. I can, can write it convincingly enough. With the limited time and limited brain capacity I have at the moment, but we will make an attempt. And any creative work you do, and I'm pretty sure I said this already, but I'm going to say it again, but in different vocab, using different vocabulary. You want the first hurdles is to get over is literally yourself, literally your own inhibitions. You need to accept that. While your work may not be great, it is still your work at the end of the day. And it's nothing to really be ashamed of. I don't really know what is the psychological reason behind our, our, our tendency to cringe at our own work. Because I, I, I actually I don't actually have a term for that. I really don't know why we cringe at our past works, why we are and feel embarrassed. Maybe it's because we feel that we have since grown past that and we can do a better job. Maybe it's the equivalent of like looking at, oh, look, here's past me. This is me when I was in, when I was five years old, when I was 15 years old and thinking, oh, what a dumb kid I was. But also at the same time, sure, you may have been dumb, but you were only dumb in comparison to how you are now. The person, the you of the yesteryears was the you of yesteryears. It is not the you of now, but you're trying to compare the you of a different time and place to the you of now and your current time and place. And doesn't that seem kind of unfair when you really think about it? At least to me, it seems fairly unfair. Ha. Huh. Just a little bit. Ah, <sighs> just a little bit. 
after I finish writing the story chat, I think I'll actually end stream in the next in the next few minutes or so. Grab myself some breakfast, maybe take a nap. I regrettably did not get much sleep last night, and after, especially after spending some time prior to this, uh, setting up some role-playing stuff, I am kind of feeling out of it. Regardless, I would like to once again thank you all for coming today. Your presence is always welcome, and thank you for listening to me rant and ramble about stuff. Once again, if you need any writing help or editing assistance, feel free to DM me on Discord or to message me in some other way and we will talk when we can find time to. I wonder, I think we will still go ahead with raiding one of my friends too, who are currently online. Why the hell not, right? The question is deciding who. Mm. No problem. That's my interpretation of pride. Thinking you're the only person that matters in the world. Being stuck in a world where there's only you and your hobby. You're the only thing that matters. I think that's the reason why people say pride is the chief among all the sins. Because apparently think, because all the other sins descend from pride or something. Feels good to be using a Tumblr account regularly again. Honestly. Alright then. Let us go find someone to raid this morning. And we'll get going. I never did get to play this, uh... Here we go, interrogation time. Sonic game. Knuckles, Nico and I need to determine what you were doing during the hour the murder... I love how he's using the original movie version of the hat. It's so cute. Did 
They also visit Mia Hanashiro, who is playing Genshin Impact. I almost never get to see my Kohai much anymore, so that could be fun. He's a fairly chill streamer. We can pop over there, chat. Well, this channel has follower or subscriber only chat. Well, that is inappropriate, unfortunately. I've been running to an issue where I keep trying to rate people that have follower or subscriber mode on, which is very awkward for me and kind of upsets my follower own followers, so we will attempt to avoid doing that from now on. Let's instead visit someone else here. Um... Let's see how Mecca is doing, actually. They're currently playing Destiny. That should be interesting. Do do do. All right, everyone. For today's raid message, let's go ahead and do Morning Raid. We're going to go ahead and use the Losty Wiggle. Nothing too special. Feel free to swap out the emoji of your choice. Thank you for coming to this morning. I apologize that I couldn't stay a little bit longer to or do a little bit more writing or on stream. Like I said, I am kind of fading a little bit, but if you have work that you would like me to try and review or to look over, if I could find some time to do so, I will make some. All right, have a good weekend, everyone. Thank you for stopping by.